going on guys welcome back in our last video we went over how to fetch and display our recent messages here and in this video i want us to go over how we can click on them so that it will take us over to our chat just like that so uh first thing we need to do guys is set this up as a navigation link so let's go ahead and do that now so basically what we're going to do is go over to our inbox view and go inside of this for loop and make each one of these inbox row views a navigation link so let's just go ahead and hit command x to cut that and we're going to say navigation link and we want to use this value and label option and the value is going to be our message and the label we will just paste in there so let's go ahead and run this guys and you're gonna notice that it looks a little bit weird. So unfortunately, like when you have a navigation link inside of a list, Apple automatically puts this like Chevron at the, uh, towards the right of it. Um, but we wanna add some custom functionality. We want the timestamp sort of up at the top here. Um, and we don't want that to be like in line with our message. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that really quickly. Um, it's actually not that bad. It, there's a pretty simple workaround that I found. So basically what we're gonna do is wrap this navigation link inside of a Z stack. So I'm going to uh, cut the whole navigation link and paste it inside of a Z stack. And we are going to make the navigation link uh, view an empty view so go ahead and cut this guy and just say empty view with parentheses and then say dot opacity is 0, 0.0 and then go ahead and add your inbox row view and let's go ahead and paste that and we should notice that everything looks the way we want it to right so same thing right and we can click on this, but nothing's gonna happen yet because we haven't set up our navigation destination. But basically all we did guys was create an empty view with a blank opacity. So it's completely invisible. And then we add our inbox row view on top of that. So this is sort of how you have to do that just to get that, uh, what's it called? Uh, Chevron to go away. And we can now have our own custom alignment with our own Chevron with this timestamp here. Um, there's obviously other ways you could do this. You could change the UI so that, you know, that shows up down at the bottom or in line with the message or whatever you want. But, uh, this is the way that I chose to do it. Cause this is what like iMessage and messenger looks like. So, um, stick into that sort of UI there, but now guys, we need to add a navigation destination for this. So let's go ahead and go down here and say dot navigation destination for message dot self. Uh, and then we're going to say message in. I actually don't know if we need that. Yes, we do. Um, then we're going to say if let user equals message dot user, we want to show the chat view and pass that user in there. And that should be good to go. So let's run this again. And we should notice that I can now click on this guy and it takes me over to my chat with that user, which is absolutely incredible, right? So this is my chat with the Joker. We can see all of his messages showing up there and we can go back, click on Tony and our navigation is working seamlessly now. So that looks really good, right guys? Um, there is something else I wanted to fix though. Um, so a problem that I noticed was that the way that this uh, list is set up is a little bit janky. So if you have like a very long list of messages, um, the scrolling doesn't work exactly as expected. So basically what we wanna do guys is put all of this inside of a list and that way we won't have to set like a custom list height and won't have to have a list embedded in a scroll view which gets messy, I don't think Apple recommends that. So let me just go over how we can fix that now and then we'll go over how to implement this timestamp string. So basically what we're gonna do is delete this scroll view. And then we are gonna take this active now view and place it inside of our list. So now 
what this does. And also, guys, let's go ahead and delete that frame right there. What this does is it places all of this stuff inside of one scroll view instead of having nested scroll views. And we'll be able to modify each one of these components individually to make sure that everything looks right. So go ahead and run this again. Oops. Sorry, guys, I accidentally screen recorded. So let's see what this looks like now. It's gonna look a little bit janky, right? Like not exactly what we want there, um, but this is pretty easy to fix. So here, obviously we want to hide this list row separator. So on our active now view, um, let's go ahead and say dot list row separator is dot hidden. And then we're gonna say dot list row insets is our edge insets. And we're gonna say dot padding is dot vertical and dot padding of dot horizontal comma four. So basically guys, we don't want this massive horizontal inset on this active now view. Um, so we're gonna customize that in, in our uh, active now list item. So let's go ahead and run that again. And we should see that that looks way better. And once again, guys, you'd be able to see this problem happening if you were to uh, have like a, a, a list of messages that goes past the bottom of the screen. You would notice that the scrolling was really messed up. Like sometimes if you scroll, it won't scroll this list. It will just scroll this guy and it's just messy. So you want all of this nested inside of one scroll view. Um, and that doesn't look too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can update this a little bit too. Like, the list insets here are a little bit, actually no, I think it looks good. We can leave that for now. Um, so next up guys, uh, now that that's fixed uh, and we have everything inside of one list, let's go ahead and figure out how to get our message timestamp here. So we're gonna go to this extensions folder. Let me just collapse this stuff. Uh, we actually wanna move that below core and we're gonna create a new file here. Uh, it's gonna be a Swift file and it's gonna be on date. So what we're gonna do is say, we want an extension on date. And basically guys, if we look at our completed app, um, we notice that timestamps can function a little bit differently from each other, right? So um, if, it's, if the message is from that same day, then you're gonna wanna display the time the message was sent. But if the message is from a different day altogether, then you are going to want to display the actual date. And maybe if the message is from the day before, you'd want to say yesterday. So I'm going to show you guys how to do some of this, uh, implement this logic here. So let's go ahead and say private var time formatter, which is a date formatter. We're going to say let formatter equal date formatter, formatter dot time style equals dot short formatter dot date format equals hour hour colon minute minute and we are going to return that formatter and then we need a day formatter as well which is another date formatter and we're going to say let formatter equal our date formatter formatter dot time style equals dot medium formatter dot date format equals month month slash day day slash year year. So that's how we get this guy right here. And this is how we get the timestamp of the message if it's from that same day. And now we're going to say return that formatter. And then I'm going to create a private func called time string, which returns a string. And I'm going to say return time formatter dot string from self self here referring to the date and then private func date string return day formatter dot string from self and then here's where the magic happens so we're going to say create another function called timestamp string which is going to return a string and i'm going to say if calendar dot current dot is date in today self then else if calendar dot current dot is date in yesterday self oops fix my brackets and then say else 
So basically guys, if the date is within one day, then we're gonna to wanna to return this time string, right? So we can just say return time string. If it was from yesterday, then we are just gonna say return yesterday. And if, if it's none of those things, we are going to return the date string. So now that we have all of this fancy date stuff, and you guys can you know, obviously carry this over into any one of your apps, it's actually very useful to have this as an extension. Um, what we can do now is go to our model folder, go to message, and then create a property here, var message timestamp string, which is a string. Actually, let's just call it timestamp string. And we're gonna say return timestamp dot date value. You guys notice this gives us back a date, and we just wrote an extension on the date uh, module. And now we can say, timestamp string, and this is the function that we just wrote. So the timestamp is from Firestore. It, it has a function to give us back the date value, which gives us back an actual date object that um, is readable by the Swift libraries. And then, because we wrote an extension on that, we can access this timestamp string property. So now, guys, what we're gonna do is go back to our core folder, go to our inbox row view, and replace yesterday with message dot timestamp string. Perfect, right? Keeps our inbox row view super nice and clean, and it gives us a very awesome, like accessible, um, you know, timestamp string right there. I'm sure you guys could do some, some different formatting if you wanted to, and you know, actually make that say AM or PM, or, or this is currently in military time, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, and everything is looking really, really clean here, guys. So the last piece of this puzzle is going to be to fetch all of our users for this active now view and be able to click on them to also go into our chats. So uh, that's gonna wrap it up for the YouTube course. Other pieces of functionality, guys, like um, you know, the user profile image and dark mode, like, you know, dark mode looks pretty sick with this, right? is going to be uh, in the completed source code in the pro course for this, which is gonna be available on my website at stephancodes.com. The link is gonna be in the description to this video. And if you sign up and become a Diamond member on my website, the link will also be in the description to this video. You get access to that course completely free. So make sure you guys sign up and become a member. There's a ton of value associated with that if you want access to the pro course with all of the additional features. So uh, thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll see you in the next one where we are gonna be wrapping up the course.